Nigeria's uh, quarter four GDP has expanded on the upside. The figures have grown faster than anticipated due to rapid, rapid growth of the oil production sector. Joining us to unpack this growth in greater detail is Sub-Saharan Africa macroeconomist at APSA CIB, Rydal Marcus. Rydal, a pleasure. Good afternoon. Hi, Rydal. I think your mic is muted. Good afternoon. <laughs> no worries. How are you, Rydal? I'm good, thank you. Um, but yes, um, I've heard you talking about Nigeria and uh, some 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 real challenges, um, mm. I suppose, with Tunubu. Um, but I think, you know, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Um, we just need to get through this uh, very difficult and painful period um, of the, uh, you know, the initial impact of the reforms. Yes, but I mean, I want to speak about the, the growth number that we're seeing coming out because uh, it's, it's, it's reasonable, right? Well, and maybe uh, if we compare it to other periods, it's not. But in my mind, with all of the issues that are happening in Nigeria, uh, that growth that they've managed to age out uh, for the fourth quarter is reasonably impressive. Absolutely. Um, I, I think we thought that growth will be slightly weaker, um, and yet it came out uh, over 3% um, if you look at the GDP at market prices. Uh, which is an improvement from the previous quarter. Um, and, and even the full year growth rate um, at market prices, again, um, it came out at 2.9%, we thought 2.7%. Um, and that while it is down 0.4% from the previous year, um, I think there were a couple of sectors that surprised us, um, especially in the last couple of months of the year where manufacturing, for example, uh, seem to have been fairly resilient and also the services sector. And we thought that the higher inflation rate, keep in mind that inflation ended the year um, just over 28%, um, that the higher inflation, tighter monetary policy, especially um, in the first part of the year, um, and in generally tough conditions uh, would have made so much, would have made it so much difficult for uh, the services sector. Um, and even the manufacturing sector, where especially the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria, or MAN as we uh, call it, um, has been uh, complaining for a while about the tough conditions and the fact that businesses are closing, etc. So um, sometimes there seems to be a bit of a disconnect from what is being reported on the ground to at least anecdotal evidence that we are seeing and the official data. But of course, the official data is much more broad than just the few, um, you know, the evidence that we sometimes get hold of. I also ask you about the issue of oil. It's, a, it's an important part of that Nigerian economy, but of course there is room and possibly it's necessary that uh, there's more diversification there and that oil not form such a huge part of uh, you know, economic output. But of course it is a difficult thing to do, Rydal, to transform an economy, uh, any economy, uh, but even one that is reliant on oil. I think you're right. I mean, the agriculture sector is certainly probably the, the, the biggest sector in Nigeria. Uh, oil is, uh, has, has, has diminished just over 10%, uh, but it's still the, the bread and butter of this country when it comes to uh, earning foreign exchanges. Um, I, I don't have the 2023 full year data, but it's typically around uh, 85 to, to 90% of, of total exports. So um, it remains key, and of course, the challenge for, for the current administration, and I suppose even previous administrations, uh, has been to improve oil production to what Nigeria is actually capable of producing. We've in the past uh, seen pr uh, production of uh, close to 2 million barrels and sometimes over 2 million barrels. But the official data the other day showed that uh, production, including the condensates, have been around 1.5 uh, 5 million barrels a day. There is, um, just this morning, there was uh, a headline saying that the Economic and, and Financial Crimes Commission and the Petroleum Union are joining hands now to try to improve security in the oil sector. And of course, we know that uh, President Tunibu has been trying to get oil majors uh, to increase uh, uh, investment into the sector. Um, so there is a lot of movement. There's a lot of effort behind the scenes. Um, and we're hoping that Nigeria can return to production levels closer to the 2 million barrels. Of course, there's the one twist in the story, which is the OPEC limit of 1.5 million barrels. I mean, does Nigeria I have to subscribe to that? We know that sometimes uh, countries within OPEC uh, kind of do their own thing. <laughs> uh, and that's based on national interest versus uh, the bloc that is OPEC. They've expressed their commitment, uh, but uh, in the past we have seen that they sometimes produce uh, a lot more. I think the first challenge for Nigeria is just to move up from 1.4 million barrels, the latest OPEC numbers that we've seen for January. Um, so I, I don't think anybody 
or anyone is too worried about whether they are able to, on a sustained basis, get to 1.5 million barrels. But talking about oil uh, uh, production, um, it was certainly a sector that turned around in the final quarter of last year, and it, the sector expanded over 12% after nearly three years of contraction. So this can be a, a, a good a, a growth story for Nigeria for this year, especially with uh, monetary policy likely to be hiked further, or monetary policy rate likely to be hiked further, inflation likely to increase further. Um, so the non-oil sector could be in for a tough time this year. Hence, we need the oil sector to, to perform. I must also ask you, the reforms that we're seeing, uh, you know, being uh, implemented now, have we, do we think that they have affected the sprint in quarter four, a rider, or are we expecting it to show up in, for, in future prints? So um, I, I think the, the reforms are certainly showing up. Um, the, the one thing that we are still waiting for is we have just seen a 30 percent plus uh, devaluation in the currency, uh, which is a second large uh, devaluation of the currency since uh, June last year. And that impact will still uh, need to be seen in uh, especially local prices. Uh, transport prices will definitely be impacted and has been impacted first, but also the second round uh, impact of that on other goods and services. So it's very likely that inflation, where we probably, uh, or we, we previously thought inflation is close to a peak, can still move above 32% uh, percent easily in the next two or three months. So the uh, Central Bank of Nigeria has got a tough uh, uh, task uh, on its hands. Um, when it meets, well, it's meeting today and tomorrow, trying to contain the inflation that the president brought by the currency. Uh, well, and with that said, uh, you know, we, I think you would have heard in the news reading, reading the story about the possibility of higher interest rates uh, here uh, at Bridal. Uh, it is also very clear that uh, things may become a little bit more difficult uh, before they get better. Uh, but with this, almost uh, just over 3% as a base, great things could happen in that Nigerian economy. Absolutely. Um, I think, in a way, to, to the meeting that the um, MPC is having today and tomorrow is going to be very key. We think that there's going to be a substantial uh, hike in the monetary policy rate. We think at least 200 basis points. But again, these actions are taken with the intention to contain the inflationary pressures, to re-anchor inflation expectations, and uh, get back to, to price stability. Now, we're probably a long way away from that, but we think that inflation could start to decline towards the end of the year, maybe ending the year uh, around 24%, 25%. Um, so, you know, there's baby steps here for a new regime. They are in, in, in uh, are planning to introduce inflation targeting regime as well. So that means that we could potentially even see further hikes from here on. Um, but I'm fairly confident listening to the president and listening to uh, Governor Cardoso, that they know what they're doing and they're pulling out all stops to trying to, to rein in inflation expectations and inflation. Well, Rydal, always a pleasure hearing from you. Thank you for taking us through this uh, print this afternoon. That was SSA, macroeconomist at APSA CIB, Rydal Marcus.